Okay, so welcome to today's YouTube. Today I'm going to go through a bit of an update on how training's going. I'm doing a run in the absolutely amazing Bushy Park. This is one of the best places, in my opinion, to train. For me personally, it feels that way because it allows me to put in good weeks of training without distraction and I almost compare it to like a, this is stupid, but it's like a pizza dough when you're pulling it in all different directions and we all live the, and we all live these lives outside of running. You know, we have family life, we have friends, social life, work, and we're being pulled in all these different directions, like you're pulling the pizza dough in all these different directions. But for whatever reason, when I'm in this area, the absolutely amazing area that it is with Richmond and Twickenham and, and Bushy Park and Richmond Park, I just find that I'm not being pulled in as many directions. To get the best out of yourself in running, you need to not stretch yourself too thin, back to the pizza dough, but also just make sure that what you are doing, the time and energy that you are spending each day, and we only have a certain amount of time and energy each day, well, the, that in the best way possible without taking away from your social life, friends, family, loved ones, work, that most of that energy is being put towards training, recovering, getting better, absorbing the training, getting ready for your next race, that next important goal that you have, and you're not just being pulled and tugged all over the place. So today we're talking about racing because I'm gonna race in a day's time. You're gonna follow me on this run through Bushy Park where you're gonna to get to see dear, beautiful scenery, just an amazing place to run that is absolutely amazing for the psychology, just helps everything calm down a little bit. And if you can find some beautiful runs like that, you're super lucky, hang on to it. But I'm gonna talk you through a couple of bits and pieces, hopefully as quick as I can, in no particular order, that we're getting updated with how training's going, some tips around racing, what you might wanna start doing before your next race, and just some general advice, how to handle that race week. Do not let it overwhelm you, and so that you can start to develop a better relationship with racing, okay? Let's see. All right, so let's start with a, just a little update on how, you know, things have been going. I've just done a camp in St. Moritz. I've been training now since January to try to build the fitness that it would take to make the Olympics. The qualifying for the Olympics is 2 away at 10 for the marathon, or you can qualify via points. And that's a possible scenario that a lot of athletes will have to look at because 2 away at 10 is very, very quick for the marathon. When I take emotions out of it, can I run to a weight 10? The answer is, the answer is likely there's been a period in 2020 between the 6108 and my eventual 209 that I'd have got very close. That means physiologically at one point in time, it's likely it was very possible. Whether or not I get to that place in this next buildup, well, we're human and nobody knows the answer to that question. That's very simple. Nobody knows how you'll respond to similar things that you've done in the past. All you can do is do everything that you possibly could to hopefully get that big result. It's that simple. We'll start to see how that's going because, well, obviously I'm gonna race you know, on the track very soon, 24 hours time, 48 hours time, I'm doing a 5K and a 10K but we'll not necessarily learn how the marathon stuff is gonna look. I've been marathon training, I haven't been track training, but it will at least tell us if the fitness, hypothetically, if we wanna use that term, is in a good place. If you can run, what did I say, 13.30 is roughly the time that I'd like to be capable of running to then be able to go run 208. Well, let's see how that goes. That's the little sort of goals. And then you've got Antrim Half Marathon where realistically, if I don't run 61 something for a half marathon or quicker, 2810 is starting to look difficult. Unless you're in heavy training, which I won't be because I'll taper because I'll want to see where the fitness is at. Yeah, then it's interesting. I might not train as aggressively for the Antrim because 
when I ran Tour 9, I love going back to that, <laughs> but when I ran the Tour 9, I probably expended too much energy in the half and then I was tired for the full. And so you have to pick your battles. It's okay to train for it a bit, it's okay to taper and race it well, but it's knowing that the bigger goal is Berlin. Training has been going great. I, I've been so disciplined with intensity, so disciplined with the execution of training, so disciplined when it comes to the little things like looking at heart rate and, and lactates and now power. I've also just got my hands on, I, I, I can't see it, it's charging I think, what's known as a moxie monitor, which is monitoring O2 saturation. I think that's gonna be huge in these next couple of weeks to really dial in efforts and see how the body what you want to do in the final eight to 10 weeks before a marathon is extend the fitness that you've currently got. So it's likely you could already run 10K, maybe even half marathon at your goal pace. But then it's what's happening after that. So as I look to extend that fitness, it'll be interesting what the oxygen saturation is doing later in some of those extension sessions. I'm also starting to use, it hasn't arrived yet, but the Super Sapiens glucose tracker I'm gonna start looking at that stuff again alongside the, you know, the saturation stuff and, and also a core heat temperature. Oh my God, I'm like a lab rat. But what I wanna start seeing is later on in these runs or these harder long runs or these longer sessions, as heat goes up, maybe O2 saturation comes down and maybe the what's going on in the glucose, there, there might be a correlation. And then you might look at implementing some things that help what you're doing. That's the whole beauty of sport is that you're always learning, A, to help educate others, to help educate myself, to then make some decisions about what could we do to strengthen where the body's currently at in terms of what race day will demand. Race day demands that I run 42.2K at a bloody good pace to qualify for the Olympics. So what am I doing between now and the start line to prepare my body the best way and what feedback can I get from some of this technology to help that? It's that simple. I've put in probably 85 to 95 mile a week all the way since pretty much January. A Couple of really good altitude camps. Training has went lovely. There's been very clear progression in that I've done reps on the track at 450 per mile, 72 per lap. I've came back nine weeks later and I'm three seconds per mile ahead of where I was. I know that because I did the same rep length, shorter rest, and I tracked lactate and heart rate, and it's fact. It's not, oh, it felt better or it felt easier. People need to start having some facts when it comes to has train and move forward. The last session was before that relay that I did and so it just so happens that now 10 to 12 weeks later we're now going to test it again in a race situation and see, yes the numbers are quicker in training, but is that leading to better races and race results? So I think I averaged 438 per mile or 439 per mile for a 7.5k relay. So, you know, you're going here to a 5K and you, you should, that day, I think, in the relay, I went through 5K in 14.12 maybe. And so if I can run 13.30, I'd be really happy. That's weather dependent, how the race goes, but I just want to feel good racing and start to repair that relationship with racing. So let's start to talk about that. I do remember a coach telling me, with marathon and half marathon, you're as good as your third result. So on the channel now, I might have to start saying 209, 211.50, 2.12.01. I'm a, I'm a 2.12.01 marathon runner. I'm a marathon runner that from 2017 through to 2020 went from 2.17.55 down to 209. It was beautiful. Life was all fucking bells and whistles, sunshine and rainbows, whatever you want to call it. But like everything, it's not that simple all the time. And so I had my fair share of ups and downs. I do believe, and, and this is reconnecting back to racing, I believe I have a bad relationship with racing, which means I'm almost afraid to race. I'm not gonna go as far to say I hate racing, but I do tend to not look forward to the experience because of so many bad experiences. I'm gonna call it self-sabotage, and it's not self-sabotage from a regard of, I 
obviously do it on purpose. How I think running works and training works is you're you're on this like fast moving train and it's operating at such high speeds that it's difficult sometimes to know if you're going in the right direction. Is it working? Is it not? But you kind of have the blinkers on and so you're just accelerating full steam ahead. There's a lot of periods in my career that I can look back and it's so obvious now that what I was doing wasn't the right thing to do. But at the time it felt right and so I was just on the train moving in that direction. It's it's sad to look back at now, but it's like I didn't self-sabotage in terms of the day before a race give myself an injury, but I self-sabotage from a perspective of I wasn't training correctly, I was maybe over-training, maybe I was under-eating, maybe I was executing training the wrong way, the intensities were wrong. And so the end result was directly impacted by my own decisions and the end result didn't work out the way hypothetically it might have, but it wasn't for a lack of wanting it or trying. Then when you have bad experiences and and a race doesn't go the way you want it to, well, it's easy to develop a bad relationship with racing. I think a lot of people have a bad relationship with racing. And if you do, comment below. I think it's fair. It's why I initially set up joggingroom.com because I wanted to teach people everything that they could do that surrounds the training to get the best out of themselves on race day. And then if the race didn't go well, you understood why because maybe you weren't working on your nutrition your recovery the sleep stuff the psychology stuff the strength stuff and then you didn't take it as personal you could just give yourself a kick up the ass for not working on those little things where this feeds back to today is i'm probably terrified the race Uh, it's my own doing i had a good experience at a relay race not long ago And that's because, you know, I've trained in the right way. I've hit the right intensities. I was able to perform pretty well for my fitness at the time. Per race has generally come down to, okay, on race day, you're testing pretty much three things. How physically well are you prepared in terms of where's your body at? And that means like, are you injured or are you not? How physiologically well are you prepared? And that means is the fitness where it needs to be to achieve the goal that you want to achieve? If you want to run a sub three hour marathon, but you haven't got the physiology to a good enough place to do that, you're going to struggle. Then you've got your psychology. So physical, psychology, physiological. Psychology is on the day where you're willing to do what it took to achieve the result. And that means sometimes it's push towards the end of a race. Sometimes it's take it easy at the initial stage of a race. And other times it's going to be managing everything that's going on around you. Don't get drawn into the pace that your friend's running at. When you go past your friends and family, don't get all excited and speed up. That's the psychology element. The problem that a lot of us have is we're not working on all three We're either showing up to race day tired, that's the physical. We're either showing up to race day maybe psychologically tired, maybe psychologically confused about what our goal should be. And then you're not getting the result that perhaps you you deserved or, or you could have earned. You maybe get a far worse result because you tried to achieve something that wasn't at your level and suddenly you're mad at running. Suddenly bad experience after bad experience after bad experience Sometimes run is not fair. You've worked really hard. You don't get the result you deserve. That's unfair. So what tends to happen is over time, you develop this bad relationship with racing. What I'm doing now is resurrecting that relationship by doing all the little things. Racing at the right intensity, accepting where my current fitness is, achieve that goal, and then that will be a ladder to the next goal. You can't skip some steps and so you might have to go from 315 to 310 to 305 and then get your sub three. But at least in that process, you're developing this nice relationship with running whereby when you put in the work and you follow those simple steps, physical, psychology, physiological, you achieve the goal that you were ready to achieve, you tick a box, you're happy, you have a good relationship with racing, you have a good experience with racing, you move on. We all tend to want things to happen quicker than they're able to happen. By rushing that process, you develop this bad relationship. It's not so much fear, anxiety, stress. It's more the brain going, ah, Stephen, I don't know. Last time we went and raced, wasn't that good. Wasn't the best weekend I've ever had. 
why don't you just stay where you are, have a nice barbecue, have a nice early night, watch some Tour de France, watch some Netflix. We prefer that. I don't blame my brain for preferring that. That does sound good. But I know that if you start training the right way, targeting races the right way, working on the little things during the week before a race, well then your race experiences can be a lot better. Once you start having better experiences and repairing that relationship with racing, you won't want Netflix and Tour de France because you'll know that I've put in the hard work, I've done all the little things, I've got an 80 to 90% chance of this race going really well and this weekend being better than Tour de France, Netflix and a barbecue. Don't blame your brain, sorry, right now for having that bad relationship. It was likely your own doing. And so you probably have to repair that like I have to repair mine. And so I'm going to this race. I'm going to make sure that it's a positive experience from start to finish, from travel. I'm going to have a plan to, to help that, which means being on time for things like flights and not getting stressed, sitting at the right pace and intensity in the 5k race. That's where I need to be very careful. Being a marathon runner, I need to progress the intensity, not go off super hard and shock the system and therefore get tired. This is all about a positive experience because then I can start to redevelop that better relationship with racing before some of the bigger races like Antrim Coast Half Marathon, Berlin Marathon. In the final stages of that race week, make sure you're working on those little things. Your hydration, your sleep, your recovery stuff. Don't overdo it towards the end of the week. If the race is Saturday, massage, foam rolling, stretching, yoga, Monday, Tuesday, by the end of the week, you're starting to try to bring your muscle tone back to a good place, which helps the legs feel good. So that's when you want to be doing your TheraBand stuff, your activation stuff, maybe some ice baths. Try to avoid massage and physio unless you really need it in those final few days because that can make your legs feel flat. Start to maybe incorporate some strides, some stuff that really gets the legs popping and firing, like not sprints where you're going to hurt yourself, but some faster running that's going to get the legs, body and mind switched on and ready to go. Some people allow their body to fall asleep in those final few days, or some people push too hard in training in those final few days. You don't freshen up, you're not ready to race. More of that stuff on the website, joggingroom.com. That's why I set it up. There's full activation routines. There's lots of stuff on TheraBand stuff. There's a full lecture on muscle tone, when to sort of do some of this stuff, why you shouldn't run on grass, why maybe you should run on tarmac or the road the day before the race. Look into that because if you've ever raced before and you say, my legs just felt terrible, I felt better in training a week ago, you've probably got the taper wrong and it might be linked to that muscle tone. But how epic is Bushy Park? Let's be honest, that's absolutely gorgeous. I hope you enjoyed this part, this sort of, we'll call it a run cast. I hope you enjoyed learning about how to redevelop that relationship with racing and why it's so important and also how to start taking care of the little things that are going to lead to better race results. I'm super fit, training's going really well, and now it's time to go bloody race, have a brilliant experience, and hopefully it goes really well. Like, subscribe, check out the website. Yeah, happy running, don't beat yourself up. If you don't like racing, apply some of these tips and strategies and take care.